Hello, everybody. I think I'm ready to get started. So let's chat a little bit first. Let's go in with setting the expectations for the playthrough. I have never played this game before. I've never seen anybody play this game before. I don't know the plot of this game. So this might end up being a little bit of a rough, rough playthrough. We'll see. I mean, we did play through two other games. So I'm hoping that we can kind of logic our way through it. But yeah, this is more or less a blind playthrough. The only thing I have notes on are specifically for um, Steam achievements. Otherwise, I have no context for any of these. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I know. So we'll get started in just a moment. Welcome in Parameter, hope you're doing well. Let's go ahead and pause the music. Make sure PSO controls are off, or it'll be a very awkward uh, session for sure. There we go. I guess we'll start a brand new Trials and Tribulations. <laughs> oh no. I hope this is a flashback case, because it's called Turn About Memories. Let, let Maya rest in peace. Or... You know what I mean, Mia. She just won't- she won't go there. I know instant Mia, that's a good sign. I'm assuming it's a flashback, because Phoenix looks very goofy in the bottom left. So maybe this is how he became a lawyer kind of thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and play Turnabout Memories. Yeah, I can't even name the cases. I, I don't even know what they are. Okay, so we're getting some huffs. Ah, oh, how did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Dot 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 dot. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! Lots of sparks going on. Oh, Phoenix, that is not your most flattering outfit. It, it wasn't me! I- I didn't- I didn't do it! Are you sure he didn't just pass out from looking at your outfit? <laughs> that is indeed an outfit. Five years earlier, Mia Faye, second trial. Damn, chat. She never escapes these games. April 11th, 9.40 AM. Just a court. Defendant lobby number three. Phew, it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ahem. I was about to say it's Grossberg. I actually paid attention, chat, because for some reason he was the mentor. Although, given how we saw him in the first game, I, I guess we'll see if it's justified here or not. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, good morning. Oh, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I'm relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Uh, uh, let go of my lapels. Mm. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. <laughs> wow, chat. Already, already going back to reassuring that we chose the right mentor back then. Fortunately not dead yet, though. Thank you for not being old bag, that's true. I, uh, I'm sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I'm Marvin Grossberg. I'm at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. 
Again, I really don't understand the, the lawyer system in this game. Oh, yes. Well, you, you've been to trial once. Why don't you go represent some person that's about to be accused of murder? It's the same thing, you know. Minor property dispute, murder. You know, just case one, case two. <laughs> Still, you surprised me. What, with your earnest request last night? Let me handle this case, you suddenly said. And quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday. Uh, about the case, I mean. I see some things never change. <laughs> Haven't met Franny, that's true. What? You've already learned all the relevant facts. What are the relevant facts? Oh no, chat. We have an attorney's badge with her? Oh, we gotta present it randomly. Doug's autopsy report, date and time, 4-9 at 3 p.m. Cause of death was a fatal electric shock. And Marvin Grossberg, who's 61 at this time. My superior in the head of Gross Grossberg Law Offices. We have Phoenix Wright with the ridiculous outfit at age 21. My client, a third year ar arts? He was an arts student? At Ivy University, he currently has a cold. Doug Swallow? What's the name pun here? I mean, Swallow sounds like a bird. Is that going to be relevant later? The victim, he was a fourth year pharmacology student at Ivy University. Or maybe it's like Drug Swallow? Is, is that what it's? Anyway, Dahlia Hawthorne. Phoenix Wright's girlfriend dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. I mean, I don't know how they get lawyers, so... I'm just gonna shrug on that one. Well, about that, you see... I mean, of course I have. I think. Oh, dear. <laughs> Chad, is... is Okay, I have an honest, earnest question. This is now, what is this, the third or fourth game? Oh dear. Is there some Japanese saying that translates to oh dear that is this very common in Japan? Where I'm having like Suikoden in flashbacks on this chat. We kept going, oh dear, like every four lines. Ludana said it all the time, chat. It's crazy. In any case, don't let your client see you're so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. Oh, apparently I'm a star of destiny? I got it elevated, apparently. Phoenix, uh, I'm not going to mimic coughing and sniffling for the sake of the audio. But anyway, he has a cold. Good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just want to say, I'll give it all I got. Yep, it'll be fine. No prob. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something? Mr. Rye? Oh, that was like a pun almost. Ara Ara. Or Mama. That could be what they're translating. I think so. It it's it's too coincidental for it to not be something related to something said very commonly in the culture. It just it's such a very specific phrase, Chad. It just... It, it, when it comes up more than one piece, you know that there's something up. Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My doc says this way. I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright. You have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent... I promise I will save you. <laughs> Please let go of my shirt. That's right. He's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. <laughs> Only if we're innocent, yeah. Need to stay strong for your client, Mia. I'm not entirely sure if anybody understands how the lawyering system works in the in the universe, including the lawyers. Like, they, it just it just never crosses their mind that they could have done it. Do you know what I mean? You know, prosecutor bad, lawyer good. <laughs> just slash attorney, I guess. My name is Mia Fey. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. Uh oh. Are we going, a f oh, we're, we're going two levels deep in the flashback? 
First it was like, what, five years ago, and now it's one year ago on top of that? But that trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then. Wait, she hasn't been- she hasn't been practicing law for a year? <laughs> like, going into courts? Why is she allowed to just come in like this? This seems highly irresponsible in the Phoenix Wright universe. Even for the Phoenix Wright universe, this is pretty ridiculous. It's like when Phoenix comes in a case like every four months. It's just kind of absurd. No one had any idea what, what evidence law was? I'm thinking so, Dango. Been one year since then, and well, here I am again. I feel like she's now getting worse in hindsight. <laughs> All her confidence, pure bluff, chat. But this time, this time I'm going to win. Oh, so she lost her first case. For my client, and for myself. April 11, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Bang. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, your honor. Oh no, it's pain with actual hair. Oh, that's how you know it's going to be an easy case. This is before he gets the toupee, I, th I think he's wearing a toupee later on, I guess. It's been a while since I remember his freakouts. Better lawyer in death than she was in life, apparently. I think so. The prosecution is ready, your honor. The defense today is Miss... Miss Mia Fey, was it? Yes, your honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be leading the defense. Yes, well, you see. Mr. Grossberg had, uh, a, a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing there right next to you? Yes, well... Wow, she's also a bad liar, apparently. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. The judge is questioning if somebody's confident to stand trial. This has to be before a senility chat. There's no way. <laughs> I'm glad I'm voicing I'm slightly younger at the moment. <laughs> oh my gosh, he cares about the court process? That's... It feels like a different writer, chat. I don't, I don't believe this judge was the same judge. <laughs> you, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Not my judge, yeah, pretty much. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Oh no. Why are all her mannerisms exactly like Phoenix's? This is not becoming of her. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Dot 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 exclamation mark. Don't worry, little girl. It'll all be over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with the summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Objection badgering the defense. I don't think they know what any of that is. I'll be real with you. I'm just shaking my head, chat. I'm still thinking about the name puns, chat. Hmm. He sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. If they badger us, we'll badger them back. Yeah, pretty much. Emphasis on badge. And the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway. Then they called the police. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence.
Crime photo one added to the court record. Crime took place behind an Ivy University building. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. Oh, I see the judge is blind as always, Chan. <laughs> your reputation for sagacity is well earned, your honor. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question. I thought it might loosen you up a bit. No senility, but the cataract's already there. Exactly. Look at him playing with the pompadour. That's so weird. I'm a genteel man, if you will. Um... A what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Oh, a perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause. Go on. Please say you know at least this much. I'm so, so sorry. I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Oh, this is BS chat. I already looked. I already know it's electrocution. Get out of here, game. <laughs> I'm not this bad at the game. He groans. My hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Oh, that's disgusting. Now see here. The details of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Ah, the court record. I think I could see that by pressing tab. Like how she says that, but I'm using the controller for it. Thank you for the raid, Tiki. Hopefully you're doing well. All of the weapons we need can, can be found in the court record. Oh, is there going to be a whip in there too? Take a good look. Oh, excuse me. Take a good hard look at the data there. And think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. I've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just press tab here. Excuse me, it's right button, not tab. I'm not playing on the keyboard. Now then, would the de oh, excuse me, <clears throat> would the de attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? It's electrocution. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Chat saying if pain can get the better of you, you should truly be ashamed of yourself. Exactly. Enjoy your food, Tiggy. Hopefully you have more luck with a red ring. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will be crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there's one more vital issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Objection, says Charlie. Exactly. We do have an objection emote. So if you want to play all, along with the hold-ons and uh, objections, they are in the emotes. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator if you catch my drift. Not really, he's the most incompetent prosecutor in the whole series. Yeah, there we go. They don't... Oh, excuse me. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. Really? I feel like he gets schooled by rookies. Bang, chat. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. E evidence? <laughs> no. We're not off to a good start, chat. Are we the start of his downfall? I think so. I was looking at that other icon that Charlie used. I wasn't sure what that was. Oh, no need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all of our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need, and then shove it into old Greybeard's face. Yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Uh, Mr. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Grossberg. 
try to set a better example for the young lady. Mia, evidence isn't the only court thing. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Let's try this again. Mia, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are as well. You can toggle between profiles and events with tab, so be sure to go over it all. Now then, let's see what you got, he says with his eyes closed. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Let's present Dahlia Hawthorne. Take that, chat. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was... This woman here. I guess maybe I can have a take that emote at some point. <laughs> My badge, yeah, pretty much. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. I hope we could skip the tutorial chat. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until about eight months ago, she was the, the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly she has some part in to play in the story. Hmm. Oh, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Bang, chat. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. How many statue clocks was she given? This might be a pre-statue clock era, sadly. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye, it's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. Bang. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, uh, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. <laughs> Phoenix Wright, title drop. I was going to say, if they talk about it being a trial and tribulation, then it'll be a full title drop. No, no, he means what you did before you were arrested. Oh, uh, achoo, achoo, achoo. I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you're suspected in the death of your fellow student. Young Swal... But, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you I was. He goes into a lot of sneezes. With the defendant, please refrain from passing on his cold to the rest of us. It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Hmm. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Was did we drop out because of this? I imagine we became a lawyer because of this case for some reason. Which is kind of weird because I thought the whole motivation in the prior two games was he had that big case uh, involving Edgeworth, and then he apparently then just went to art school anyway. So doesn't this kind of undermine his whole motive for the first two games? Anyway, let, let's not think about it too hard right now. Right away, Your Honor. Either that or the lawyer qualifications are a super low bar. Witness testimony, the victim and I. Um, I... I admit I was there. But I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. Race the VP2 motto, don't think too hard about it. It's true. Hardly knew the guy to begin with. Never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Uh, okay. Hmm. I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Right. Like I said, I'm not a killer. Phew. Looks like the judge understands. Hmm. You're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be... Just requires a bar exam. Don't even need to do the bar test, let alone the bar final. True. This witness has, still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? 
He's right. And it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? Are we sure she's supposed to be a lawyer, Chad? I'm getting really concerned about her being at the stand. If a witness is lying, their statements will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client, in court, all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a lie? A contradiction? Bang. Now then, your cross-examination if you please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Wright. Tell me you haven't been lying. Well, we know he's lying. His last statement didn't make any sense. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Yes, yes he would. Okay, I'm just immediately gonna go to the very obvious lie. So, I mean, the very obvious lie is, if he has allegedly has never even talked to the person, how does he know that he's British? Hold it. Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. You hardly knew him. Then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Uh-oh, the hold it's are coming out. Dot dot dot. He sneezes. Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, no, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Bang. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yeah, well... So he's walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Was he? Oops, I don't see it there. Objection! Objection! Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! And Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But, if that really was the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. I don't know if I'm a fan of the new objection music. I don't think I'm a fan. Table slam chat. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me. Please forgive me! Uh... Mia, you've made our client cry. <laughs> All in a day's work, right chat? Let him. That P on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyway. I can't believe I trusted him. Wait, what? Mr. Wright was all wrong. She named punned him pretty hard there, though. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. Quite clear that this man simply did not stumble upon the scene of the crime. Yeah, I don't know what that... I don't know what that meant. I don't know what it meant. Uh... Uh-oh. Did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh... Uh, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Oh, man, I'm thinking of, like, Yakuza when I see stuff like that. Maybe a phony is a good guess. Like that from the chat of what the P allegedly stands for. Yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. 
How did you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? This doesn't even have anything to do with the case. Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the crime scene. I like how there's like no numbers on the watch, but they want you to know where 12 o'clock is. It feels like that's an important detail for later. Oh, what's this? In the victim hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X. Objection. Objection. Yes, but even if I... Even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. Ooh, that was a voice. Objection! I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Is it because it has his name on it? Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints all over it. What? The victim obviously overdosed? <laughs> I don't know about that. Censoring his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped by Mr. Wright, and hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Prime photo 2. Victim's watch stopped at time of death. Added to the court record. Cold color X. Found clutched in the victim's hand. Covered in Wright's fingerprints. Added to the court record. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, you have some kind of explanation for all this. Uh... This is really bad. Uh, I... Mr. Grossberg is kind of gross. I feel... I feel not right voicing his lines, honestly. Why is he talking about this? I'll voice them for now, but seriously. I hope Grossberg does not show up again in the future cases. Oh, my buttocks. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Yeah, anyway. What really happened? I'm glad that was dialogue that was in the game. Very necessary. The truth is, went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. 245? Hmm. That's interesting. We talked for a bit. Then at around 3 o'clock, we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. Welcome, Murphy. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Make him say hamburgers instead? I think so. Yeah, I was gonna say TMI. <laughs> Definitely TMI. It wasn't just a one-off. I have a feeling he's going to be saying it quite a bit before the case is over. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days. I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. Achoo, achoo! I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Hmm. Miss Fay, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright. Don't tell any more lies. Hmm. I don't feel like any statement in particular is leading to... I don't feel like any of this is leading to an objection here. The most I could really do is press a couple statements, I think. So let's press his second statement. Hold it! Hold it. 
Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, we're both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he's saying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Grim called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laborato laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that ran on high voltage electricity. Hmm. Oh, oh, how fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe you should ask him for more details. Um... I don't know if about the timing matters right now. I mean, right now it seems like he's telling the truth. I don't know if I'd really get anywhere by doing this. Let's ask about the department. I was wondering if you could tell us more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier, you said in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right. They sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there's high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables. Yeah, there are electrical poles set up all around the building. High-voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. Are, are we just trying to establish that there's cables? What? Why Why do I have to establish there's... They're in the photo. What do you mean we're getting somewhere? <laughs> right, chat? Like, it, isn't the photo obvious? Wait, why do I need more evidence than this to say cables killed him? I'm not... Okay. Alright, we're, we're, we're going real slow with this case again. Talked for a bit, then around 3 o'clock we split up. Sure, we'll, we'll press. Hold it! So what was it you were talking about? You know. And he coughs. Eh, maybe we should hang out again sometime. Hang out again sometime. I wish that were true. Okay, so we didn't get anything from that. And later, when I went back there, I found him lying there. Let's press. Hold it! So you say you went back. Um, yeah. That's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up. Everybody dot dot dots on that one. And then he seizes. Judging by the atmosphere, pretty sure no one is buying this. I don't think I care about the cold... Yeah, maybe we could press about him losing it. Maybe this will go somewhere. Hold it! On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly. Just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Hmm. Her mini omelets are magically delicious. What are they, Lucky Charms? <laughs> yeah. why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I I'm so sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. <laughs> what? what? E excuse me? Uh, apparently the abuse is both on the prosecution side and the defense side for some reason. I would bang the gavel on that one too. I think that's enough for now. Okay, so I guess I just have to press statements. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. Yandari says Murphy, pretty much. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the bottle either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Hmm. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. 
Are, are, are you serious? Are, are, you, are, you, are you serious? He died of electricity and you're wondering how it was carried out? Okay, so that we've now confirmed the judge is officially blind. He's been blind for at least five years. <laughs> right, chat? Like, oh boy. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet. No, no, he... No, he literally means the murder weapon, Furphy. He's not asking about how the cable was cut or anything. I don't think he even realizes the cable has been cut. It's quite something. Well, that is... I... You're correct, Your Honor. I can't believe this is happening. So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done... What do you mean if you could somehow establish? Tutorial case, please. Maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. I mean, I'm going to establish the murder method. I'm not blind. Even though I do wear glasses. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brush statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes. An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Hmm, of course I know that. Actually, I'd totally forgotten about that. Why is she in this court trial? The, the, bar, the, uh, the bar to enter this... this <laughs> The bar to enter this courtroom is really, really low. She doesn't know what objections are, how to read evidence, that she, that she has to produce evidence. Oh my gosh, game please. This is embarrassing for Mia. This is actual straight up character assassination chat. This is brutal to watch. I would bang the gavel too. Although it would be to kick her out of court. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. I mean, I I'm going to present the photo. Take that. Take that! As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Wow, he is really blind, chat. <laughs> Mia, please, judge, judge, please. Dango saying bar exam, name, you exist, yes, no. I mean, I think so. I'm not entirely sure this judge is qualified either. I also like that at no point we've explained what the purpose of the umbrella has been so far. Hmm. I like to think the cable hit the umbrella or something, but we'll see. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? I should just point to the judge, honestly. It's embarrassing. Let me put- let me point at the sparks. Take that! Murphy says, sequel and malady, everyone gets master TBI for the tutorial case. Something like that. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe. Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines that the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. Hmm. So then, the high voltage cable. Hmm. Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm. That certainly sounds plausible. Where? Uh, chat, chat, where, where are the detectives? Where's Gumshoe? <laughs> Have some co someone come in and talk about the crime scene in autopsy report. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well... I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may have indeed been a high-voltage cable. 
However, I want you to think about what that really implies. Hmm. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant. Hmm. That much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. Hmm. Y you do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Does it? Ah, uh, you mean? Yes, and it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. Thank you, Salve345, for following. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. I guess that's a callback to the first game. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Oh, is he suggesting he got shoved? Intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. Bang, 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 chat. Order, order, order. That's enough. I think we can conclude that there's no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Sick of for sick of forking us, we're done. Mr. Grossberg. Okay, we're gonna do word replacement because I don't feel like saying this word over and over with him. My hamburgers never lie. The show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. Why is he our mentor? No, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor, Bag, at this time I'm prepared to render a verdict in this case. Hold it! Hold it. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But I, I can't. I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Words you should never follow. <laughs> In real life, for sure. Miss Fay. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. Objection! We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. Wait a minute. Mr. Wright, I... I'll tell you what really happened. <laughs> Are you... Chad implying that he was dating uh, Doug Swallow, apparently. That would be the, the brutal truth coming out in the courtroom. Objection! But I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need to... For, uh, for further... I... I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My fault that Doug Swallow's dead. So it's just replaying the cutscene from before. It's gonna be bad news, apparently, chat. So there's something we need to know about that girl, but that time there's no space between the dots. Oh, there we go. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Judge dot dot dots on that one. 
What you just said, was that the truth? Yes, I... I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth... That was a shove, he got some airtime with that one, indeed. Everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. Please. Please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I... I believe in you! Oh. Um, th thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Hmm. It feels like my... My hamburgers are doing the Harlem Shake. I'm sorry, what? Anyway, let's just ignore Mr. Grossberg. I think it's probably for the best. When I push the victim. That guy, he's talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. Oh, we gotta press on that statement. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there, dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. Phoenix stole the god hand, it's true. Jad saying, aren't you supposed to swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth when you first take the stand? So help them judge God, I hope so. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm, a simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Oof. Big oof, chat. Hmm, Miss Faye. Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Y yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. Alright, so let's go to the at that moment. Let's see if we can get him to clarify what the noise was. Hold it. Hold it! A loud noise. And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap. You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, your honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. No, it's probably the cable being cut the first time. Objection. Objection. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? Treading on some dangerous ground here. No, we gotta ask for details. Never be afraid in Phoenix, right, to ask for more details. Mr. Wright. That loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Aha, could it, could it have been? Oh, are they implying that it was maybe the umbrella? The umbrella did get broken somehow. But it could be a contradiction on how he fell on it. You see how the umbrella is very far away from him and he's not holding it? You would think the umbrella would be closer if this wasn't altered in some way. Anyway, let's continue. I mean, we're in the tutorial case, so it's very obvious that Dahlia did it, <laughs> just for Jack Blarity. It Even for me not having played the game, there's only one other person in the case. It's not a real mystery as to who did it. 
Yes. Could it have been? Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. Yeah, see that? The umbrella is not facing the right way. He fell right on top of it, and it broke. Or if he says umbrella caught the line, broke the line once, I dragged the umbrella, like, so I killed him? I don't know. Chat saying, cold-blooded killer X did it, a distant relative d of the killer. Actually, the real killer was the killer. You're right, chat. You're right. That was probably the noise I heard. Hmm. An umbrella, huh? And what did that umbrella be And did that umbrella belong to the victim? Okay. Okay, chat. Hold on. Let's think about it. Okay, let me let me figure out the case. So I think what's happening is the guy was previously dating the killer. He suspected her of something but couldn't prove it. Then Phoenix accidentally left his medicine behind one day after lunch and he decided to perform a report on it, maybe because he was concerned that it wasn't working. Maybe the pills are actually poison and that was the motive for the death? Is that what the game is implying with this? I think so. Let's see if it goes that way. So if they start talking about poisoning, Chad, I'm on it. An umbrella, huh? And did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it's a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. <laughs> wow, Phoenix, things you shouldn't say about people that have recently died, especially people you're accused of killing. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. Suddenly soaked to the bone. Hmm. Miss Faye, what do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well, we're gonna say of course it's important. <laughs> Although, of course it's not important, it's pretty tempting, I'm not gonna lie. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, this cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Huh, how perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. Bang. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. Okay, there we go. Now we can present a photo to this. Okay, so we know that can't possibly be true. Because if we look back at the evidence, and that's what I checked while he was talking about it, the umbrella is too far away, therefore he did not fall on top of it, therefore something happened to the crime scene. So let's draw that into question here. I'm going to present crime, crime photo one here. Objection. Objection! Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, I mentioned that. I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. The victim, he moved. Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was selected by the police at the crime scene. I want it presented as evidence immediately. Umbrella. Owned by the victim, found broken near an electrical pole at the crime scene. Added to the court record. But the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. Objection. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. 
Uh, uh, but, but, bang. I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. He says that every single time when he's in a case and immediately wants to end it too early. Every single damn time, chat. This judge is something else. N no! I must say, I still find it hard to believe. Or if he says this is completely unlike the actual Japanese justice system, it's something. But remember, this is supposed to be in America. This is how the American laws work, according to Phoenix Wright logic. That a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Phoenix testimony added to the court record. Uh, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. There's a loud snap when this happened. Well done, Mia. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, your honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. Murphy's saying if there's a tiny shred of doubt, I can't decide. That's pretty accurate. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Exactly. And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? Well, it's obviously the girlfriend. Because they already established they were together at lunch. Therefore, she would have been nearby. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne. You don't mean Dolly. I do, your honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Apparently, there's a statement I need to press later of hers to get an achievement. So we're, we're gonna look for the achievement, chat. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. I call the victim to the stand. Something like that. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, hair flick, chat. Bad news. You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? Bang. I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. I mean, that's kind of what's happening currently in the game. As soon as they're basically on trial, they question one person, instant guilty. It's pretty ridiculous. April 11th, 11.52 a.m., just a court, defendant lobby number three. Miss Fay, I I'm sorry about what happened back there. I... I... It's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I could start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious. You're hiding such important facts. But... The next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She... She's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and... Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dolly and I... We first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm saying to be a lawyer on the side. What do you mean on the side? What? Why Why would artist be your primary and lawyer is on the side? Would it be the other way around? I met her in a dream, says Murphy. Charlie says you should watch the Fallout series on Amazon. Uh, not too much into the Fallout series, but I did hear good things for people that are interested in it. Hmm. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. Yeah, this... <laughs> This is something else. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. I'm still thinking about her name, chap. This is really bothering me. <laughs> it is her name just the fact that both of her names are plants? Because Dahlia is definitely a flower. I've seen that before. I don't think Hawthorne is spelled correctly, but I think that's a hedge. So I, I don't know if she's going to be very floral or something. Maybe it'll make more sense when we see her. Her pun was not as clear to me. The other ones are like wordplay puns. It's kind of like naming somebody like cat dog and they're like a vet or something. It's just kind of odd to me, but whatever. Anyway, let's reread the statement. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Nango says, of course, on the side, he wants to make sure he can take proper legal action so someone plagiarizes work. Oh, no. Oh, here. Take a look at this. She gave this to me the day we met as the symbol of our love. Why does it look like a potion? <laughs> Is he actually being drugged? She'd been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. This is very suspiciously a vial of poison. I'm just saying, chat. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. The startling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, all right. Makes me so happy. Show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Dolly's present borrowed from Phoenix Wright. Small bottle necklace given to Wright on the day they met. He shows it to everyone. Hmm. Um, anyway. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. P please give it back now. <laughs> um, are we sure they're dating? What a strange girl. Asking for a present back like that. Dango said she said, I'm sensing main character five think this is a serious item. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't have happened to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Oh, oh did she hide evidence by making him wear it? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse? Murder? What are you reading there? Let me see it. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there's some connection between these two cases, am I correct? Newspaper clipping, an article from 828 almost eight months ago added to the court record. Hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. Murder in the courthouse. Let's read it before we go any further. Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who is sitting with the victim. Hmm. Serial poisoner, chat. Hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I... I need to finish this myself. Oh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room. See what else I could find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, looks like recess is about over. We better all get moving. His cereal poison, pretty much. I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. Jeez, Mia, I, I have to voice the dialogue. I can only read so fast. Plus, we were talking about uh, Fallout briefly. To be continued. Well, chat, that's the end of today's session. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we're gonna go at least a little further. Oh, a little musical number we heard there. Um. So the downside is, I think I missed an achievement in the first game. But for the second game, I'm pretty sure I got everything. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to override this save file because I don't think I need it anymore.
Oh, well, maybe we'll go back and get the other achievement. I missed one meal from the conversations with the person giving us meals at the end of the final case. So sad, chat. Somewhere in there I missed it. April 11th, 12, 13 p.m., District Court, courtroom number two. No worries, Dango. Bang. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. The butterfly's coming in. What's with this stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I've been deceived by many witnesses. Yeah, you're a pretty incompetent, Judge. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a, a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe he actually said that. Oh, um. Now then, witness, could you please state your full name? Hi, um. Don't worry, sweetie. There's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. I will bash them with my gavel. I love how they look straight at me when they say that. Um, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? Judge admits the bias, pretty much. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all mine. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the bo- <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry, what? That's- that's not an appropriate line. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I was not ready for that. What? <laughs> I mean, I guess it dates the game, but I'm like... That's... Uh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> it's definitely not appropriate. How did they fit the- <laughs> What rating is this game again? Well, anyway, we're learning about what brings all the boys to the yard, apparently. Um, sir? <laughs> oh my gosh, the OG game came out in 2004-ish, by the way. Uh, for what it's worth, something like that. At any moment, we're gonna say, damn right it, it's better than yours or something. I feel like we're like a dialogue from that from occurring. Is there something I can help you with? You just go and say whatever is on your mind. I'm sure there must be some kind of mistake. Beanie wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say it. She's going to be a tough witness, all right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just... I haven't recovered from that. <laughs> it's just like, what? Oh my gosh. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witness on the day of the incident, if you please. <laughs> Burfi saying it was really the song milkshake that was referenced there came out in 2003. Yeah, it is true because that's what I was saying. I I know exactly what song that is, and I'm like, oof, big oof. So anyway, let's go through her uh, testimony. Actually, before I read this. Okay. Just wanted to see specifically what Phoenix's testimony had. I'd been planning to go back to Phoenix's place after class was over. 
Thini and Do- I always want to say Doogie or Dogie. I almost said Dogie, actually. Thini and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. Then suddenly... I- the urge to say Dogie is so strong, chat. You have no idea. Then Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. Wow, that was the weakest testimony so far. That's when Feeney noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students. They called the authorities. If only Dogie were in this game, then we have real detective. Do you want me to call him Dogie? I could call him Dogie. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. Objection, young lady. As old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. But... but I... I would never... Hold it. Hold it! That's more than enough witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Tee-hee! You haven't changed a bit. Mia Fey. I was gonna say, chat, how long do you think it's gonna take before the hair goes all demonic? <laughs> what do you think, chat? The butterflies will fly away. Then we'll just have, like, the angry scowl and, like, veins everywhere. You can kind of see it already, right, chat? You know her freakout's gonna be something. What's this? So you two are acquainted? Yes. We've met before. Once. Butterflies turn into wasps, that would be something. Bang. In any case, Miss Fay, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madam Fay. Uh-oh, referred to as Madam Fay, so she knows about the spiritual side of things. Madam, I'm no one's grandmother yet, girly. Okay, well, obviously the wobbly and fall down made no sense. But the question is, do I just immediately present evidence or press? I, I guess it wouldn't hurt to press. Either way, I'd like to present evidence, aka the contradiction that, you know, Phoenix shoved him. He didn't become wobbly, quote-unquote. Hold, Hold it! Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? Wow, really obvious lie here. I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to hurt Dogi. Repress her for no good reason. I just know the judge will get angry with me. Hmm. So what should I do about her testimony? Uh, show contradiction. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? I... I would never... Objection! Objection! Miss Faye, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I believe the defense is engaged in a... Uh, a fishing expedition. That is... Oh, she is no supporting. Please don't glare at me like that. I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I will. If you don't mind, I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Oh no, she um actually does? Um, actually... I didn't see the moment he pushed Doki. Hmm.
So I got something added to the testimony, but I don't think that did anything for me? Unless I press this again. What happens if I just present evidence here? That didn't do what I thought it would do. Let's present this, I guess. Objection! Objection. You say you didn't hear anything unusual. Is that correct? Yes. That's why I was very relaxed, looking at the scenery around me. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright, and he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? I... Objection! Well then, maybe the noise wasn't all that memorable. Objection! But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise, like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Ah! Um... May I have a moment to answer? By, by all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on. I was listening to music at the time. Eh, headphones? You mean both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes. I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. So I put my headphones on to block it out. Hmm. <laughs> well, your honor. As you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. The classic, I didn't see any, anything. It's a blind and deaf classic. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. Wait a second, Mia. That testimony just now was absolute garbage, yes. She said something that to should totally change this whole case. <laughs> she didn't hear anything. <laughs> I mean, that's not, that's not untrue. She's listening to music. There was lightning. Yeah, so she's implying Thor did something. So we'll say it's lightning, I guess. Your Honor, there's a problem with this witness's testimony. Well, what do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere. Am I right? Now is not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm with like Chris on that one. Dot, dot, dot. No? Oh. Bang. Hmm. I must admit the thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? I mean, we ask that all the time, Mia. This entire case is built on the premise that Mr... Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. Bang, bang, bang. It appears the defense may be on to something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? All right, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty now if you don't... Objection! <laughs> I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Fay. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at that location. What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to the case. Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? And why was this not handed over to the defense for a proper trial? This is pretty nonsense. Is what he should say, but we, we know he's not going to say that. Miss Affidavit. 
And who is this affidavit from? The pharmacol pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. Um... I don't think you're allowed to do that? <laughs> All equipment in the labs lost power. All of a sudden, around 3 p.m. that day. So much for cross-examination or, you know, joint, joint interrogation or something like that. Just, uh, we interrogated them. We're not gonna let anybody know. It's fine. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So, you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. It lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Sue the school. Sue the school. Sue the school. Oh. <clears> hmm. <throat> I see. Apparently, the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump could have caused them to break. Yeah, they should have this place condemned. Student testimony, the old power cable broke due to some sort of impact on 4-9 at 2.55 p.m. However, there is one thing that troubles me. This is the first time we've taken written testimony in this entire game. To my knowledge, I feel like this is illegal. <laughs> Unless we're recording some other prior case, then we've had notes on that, of course. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Oh well, I suppose you could say that. Hmm, Miss Faye. Do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your, your honor. I don't like how this is looking one bit. So Phoenix Power shoved Dogi up 10 feet, maybe. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Bang. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Um... Do we... Do we just present Phoenix here? <laughs> what happened? I mean, like... That feels, like, really bad to do since we're on the defense. I mean, there's only... I mean, there's only three possible choices that make sense. The person fell into it, and they caused the cable to break, or they hit it with the umbrella. Dahlia did it, so she caused the cable to break. Phoenix did it because of the shove. I'm not sure what answer they're honestly looking for here. I'll just go for Phoenix, because he's on the left, I guess. When in doubt, pick the left one. Your Honor... Please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, like, they... <laughs> whatever, it's fine. He said that after he pushed the victim, heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in with Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Wow, Mr. Wright it- So, can they sue Wright for damage to the property? <laughs> Alright, we're going with that, apparently. Yes, the prosecution also came to the same conclusion. It was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. Objection. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right. The victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no. 
It doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. Ah! In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I long to hear them. Is she quoting Conan? The Barbarian? What a... What an odd thing to reference in the middle of court. <laughs> it's, you don't just throw that word out there. Like, all I think of is the first code in the Barbarian movie chat. I'm just like, okay. Sure, let, let's go with that, apparently. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct. Um... Mr. Judge, sir, may I say something? The Madam Attorney's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What? 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 What the? Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time, please, Mr. Judge. <clears throat> Bang. Of course it's all right. Just go ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. What I witnessed part two. The truth is, Vini pushed him twice. Oh, that's what we need to uh, press for an achievement later. So, found it. We now have context. <clears throat> The first time was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Doki tried his best to run away from him. But Feeny caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Doki being electrocuted. It all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. <clears throat> so after being shoved... The victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeny, but I... I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? <laughs> Dango repurposing the Conan the Barbarian quote for what is best in life. Yeah, that is, that is like the, the one of the only quotes I remember from that movie. So we'll quote what Dango's saying here. Yeah, what is best in life? Objecting, saying that, saying take that, nearing the limitations of my enemies of the court. Yeah, pretty much. Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem you are. Bang. Now then, Miss Fay, you may proceed with your cross-examination. What I witnessed, part two. Okay, for the sake of getting the achievement, we're gonna press this statement. Hold it! Hold it! Miss Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dogie. I know. I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeny. So that's why you basically lied to the court. I was a bad girl. I know. Um, Mr. Judge? Y yes? Would you please, please forgive little old me? Little old me? Who says that? Of course he won't. What you did was perjury. Oh, come now. It was just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time. But please be more careful from now on, all right? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. Ho, ho, ho. The judge had better be more careful himself. The dark alley is friendlier than that girl. Hmm. Do I question the first time? I just best to run away from him. They caught up to him, crush him from behind. It all happening for less, less than a minute. Maybe I can. Maybe the the watch evidence will be important here. As I'm guessing, it happened across 
two minutes? So let's press the statement. If we don't get anything new, I'm just going to present the photo there. Hold it! Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry. I didn't actually see it. I... I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed. It would have been horrific for anyone to behold. If I don't figure out the contradiction here, it's all over. She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Think, Mia. Oh, no. Now I'm thinking of the... Of the think, Mia, think. We're not doing well this time. Okay, so I'm gonna guess... I just immediately present the photo because it's not 3 o'clock and it was established that the impact was at 2.55. So we're establishing there's a 7 minute gap based off the photo. I'm gonna guess this is what it wants to present. Objection! Objection! That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Oh, that's a 5. I was thinking it was 3.02. So I was slightly off. Yes, and your point is Miss Faye. My point is this, so it's a 10 minute gap. What time was it when the lab suffered the power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Yeah! Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happen happened during this 10-minute interval? The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doki Swallow. That's for you, chat. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Objection! This is nonsense, the real murderer. Objection. Even you can't deny the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. Objection! And who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. Was there a window of opportunity for the real killer? Bang. Miss Faye, is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Very well, but remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. <laughs> I wish I could accuse the judge, chat. Objection, indeed. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Fay. Bang. Now then, Miss Fay, let's have at it. Who is the real killer? The judge is sadly not here. So we're gonna have to present Hawthorne. Or our attorney badge. It's kind of tempting, I'm not gonna lie, just to showcase the badge for no reason. Take that. Take that. It could have only been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. Objection! Objection! The defense is grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing the whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Our badge is not a killer. That's fair. It's not a killer... yet. Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, Miss Fay. What, what I, I mean, why? That is to say, Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However. Uh, 
after Ms. Ru Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene. It was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Ah! How could you say something so mean, Madam Faye? I... I didn't do anything. Bang. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge you are... Hold it! Your Honor! Please, I have something I want to say. And he sneezes. You! What is it? Please, please strike everything the defense just said now from the record. What the? Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. Dolly, she... She couldn't do something like that. Bang. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. Ah! And he sneezes. Leave my dolly alone! Unknown person says, Sigh, that boy? Who's speaking? Oh. Why, why did it say question marks for that? Did we forget who Grossberg was? I mean, to be fair, we try to mentally block him out of her head whenever we're not seeing him. Maybe that's what happened? He's gotten himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I arrived just in the nick of time. I guess he was still looking for evidence, I suppose. I found the police report that on the incident in your newspaper clipping... Police report on the incident eight months ago, added to the court record. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Let's take a look at that now before we go too much further. Incident overview, location, district court house, cafeteria. Date time, August 27, 4 p.m. Victim, Diego Armando. Occupation lawyer, suspect, Dahlia Hawthorne. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the sub suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or on the sus suspect's person. It's unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. Well, chat, it was very convenient. We have a very suspicious present that she wants back. You better take a good look at it. It, uh, details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Ooh. What twist. Bang. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I... I, that is, I... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Uh, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. She sniffles. Oh, er, that is, I... Um... Go, go, go right ahead. Madam Faye, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dogie? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Dogie Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. Objection! I told you you shouldn't let me handle this. She weeps. Oh, sorry. But please, go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. Oh, I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago. An incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... And then that same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor. The defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? What about? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Uh oh, Mr. Phoenix Wright is reminding me of a certain other whip happy character. Objection! What could that possibly have to do with this case? Objection! The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant. Am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Bang. Very well then. The court grants the defense's request. 
Young lady, would you mind staying on for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dolly Hawthorne. How I met my Feeny, witness testimony. I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey-wovey, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright, do that again and you'll be held in contempt of court. And now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. Okay. Well. I mean, we gotta press on the it's like we're destined to meet. I don't think anything else really is worth pressing. Let's do this. Hold it. The courthouse reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madam Faye. After all, Feeny was... Feeny was not only an art student, but he's also planning on becoming a lawyer. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? Objection! This line of questioning is a waste of time! It's nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Fay, I'm warning you. If this has nothing to do with Mr. Dogie Swallow's case, I have to remember the judge is on Dahlia's side. I better tread carefully. We're gonna keep pressing. Your Honor, if you allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her testimony. Very well. Young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courtroom reading room? Or courthouse, excuse me. If it pleases, Your Honor, the answer is simply this. I come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. Hmm. So she is listed as the suspect here. Would this be good enough to get them on the trail that she killed the original person? Diego Armando. Hmm. I'm thinking it is. I mean, worst thing that happens is I put a... Like, maybe it'll ask us to be like, where in the report is it relevant? Like it did in the first game, and maybe I point out that she's the suspect. Let's go ahead and present this. Objection! Objection! Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? <laughs> you were probably on trial. Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? Objection! Objection! What is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Fay? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. Oh, she did it for me. That makes it simple. People doing research gaffs, pretty much. And that name is... Dahlia Hawthorne. What? D Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes. The sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! This is unbelievable. It's true, then. The loveliest rose can hide the cruel florns. Miss Faye, that's not fair. You can't slander my witness in this case. Um... I, Winston Payne, will not allow it. Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Uh, p pardon me. Go right ahead. It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm. 
You express some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together. Now I've just got to stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh. You really lit a fire in my heart. And my buttocks. I'm shaking my head. I can hardly tell which is more inflamed. My spirit or my hamburgers. Yeah, definitely ew from this character so far. Well, chat, so far he's a pretty terrible character. When is testimony, the poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it's a liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons, which would be almost the exact dosage that would be in the bottle that Phoenix has. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I don't even know where to get a poison like that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne. But I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeves today. And flame hamburgers, flame or grilled, that's true. I'm gonna go with grilled. Flame grilled. <laughs> And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Ah! What the? Oh, why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Ah, uh -huh, Mia. You're glowing with the true lawyer lawyer's aura, my dear. That proud posture and self-confidence. Absolutely smashing. The poisoning cross-examination. I mean... Can we do the... Do we even need to press this? Can I, can I just directly do this, or will I get penalized? Hmm... I feel like I need more steps in between. Uh... I wanna see what happens if I press this, hold on. And that's the reason they didn't arrest you. Because no one could show how you could have gotten the poison. I think that's good enough reason, Madam Faye. She's right. I think we've all had enough of Miss Faye's questions. Oh, okay. So previously she would have been dating her boyfriend. So that works. Okay, so then maybe I could just present the boyfriend before. Let's present Dogi at that statement, maybe. So even here, we're just saying we have to establish how she got the poison. So yeah, we could say her boyfriend then. Oops, I didn't mean to go all the way through. Okay, I think I basically get what it wants. So, so far, no errors. Which is pretty good. Um, Present Dogi Swallow here. Objection. Objection! You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had easy access to that kind of poison. Didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. B boyfriend? You mean the victim, Doki Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you'll recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. The pharmacology? His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, The culprit could never have attained such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then, it was a matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was the one sitting at this very table. Oh, at his very table. You! No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. Who could it be? Objection! That's nothing but a base like his accus- May some say something, Madam Faye. What is it, Miss Hawthorne? 
the amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, we need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. Oh, wrong person speaking. Whatever, you understand. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me, madam. If this is a court of law. You're saying I threw the poison container away. I think you need to show some kind of proof. Proof? She got me good with that. That's <laughs> so lame. Yeah, chat, the container could be anything. Provide some evidence, or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. I was going to say, I think more and more as we call her Mia, she's definitely missing an action on this one when it comes to the uh, luring skills. <laughs> Unless we come up with some evidence, we're going to lose this lead. The police conducted a full body search of Dahlia and of the entire courthouse. Wow, did she really not piece this together? It's like the world's most obvious case. And yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. We're going to accuse the young lady of committing the murder. Then where is the container the poison was carried in? What happened to it? Now we can present it. Take that! You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. Objection! So the defendant was this witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him disguised as... a present. Well, what? But... but that's... Hmm. That's a charming little necklace. Is this... a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Fay? And then we go, here, Judge, we're gonna pour some stuff out of the bottle. How about you have a sip? <laughs> right, chat? We're gonna ask him to taste it. Does this taste like poison to you? The day the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. Chad already knows what I'm going for. We got one piece. What? What are, are you saying that there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. Exactly. They're, they're sailing all over the place. The one piece is right there. Maybe the courtroom is the grand line. However... I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. Dot 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 from Dahlia. Oh yeah, chat, she's gonna go full evil soon. No! Ah! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. <clears throat> Objection. On behalf of Dolly, I object. Shut up, Phoenix. Mr. Wright, control yourself. I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? Because... Because I'm madly in love with her. Yeah, let's all dot 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 that one. Mm -hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyway? Wow, that's a sick burn. Damn, chat. Mia came out and just... Pff, knife in the gut on that one. Yeah, big, big oof. Well, I guess she must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please, open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone 
The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is to keep you quiet. <laughs> that's, the, that's a good one. I was, I was so tempted to dislike these, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, anyways, it's, it's because of the necklace. Dahlia Hawthorne was, was not and is not madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is that bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. M my necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Tell my serious she's always saying the same thing to me. Please give it back now. Yeah, yeah. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying! But you never gave it back to her. To make things worse for her, you insisting on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you! No! That's a lie! Ah! Ah! Fade to white suddenly. Mia, are you alright? All the defendant. He's getting away. Bailiff, hurry! After him! Mia! Mia, are you alright? Yes, I... I think so. And boy. He went completely insane. Where... Where's Mr. Wright? Looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no! Your future super lawyer, everyone. Yeah, this every game just makes Phoenix look worse and worse. I'm not gonna lie. What is it? The bottle necklace. Miss Hoth Hawthorne's present. It's gone. What? That's terrible. Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Oh, is that what happened? Foolish boy. The only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? He shouts loudly into the court. Oh, I thought nobody was at the judge stand. Wait, the judge is back now? Or did they just stock image and forget that just happened? Guess the judge is back now. Mr. Wright, this sort of behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. I I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright, what did you do with the bottle necklace? Forgive me, I I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. Just give back the necklace. I ate it. You... what? You... you ate it? <laughs> this would explain why Phoenix is a little special, Chad. I'm not gonna lie. It was too big to swallow. So I had to chew it in a little bits first, but yeah. Ugh. Ah! What the... What? What is he doing now? Hold it. Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? That bottle you swallowed may have had some poison left in it. Objection! <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly that bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I think that it's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is very much still alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. Hmm. So it would seem. Objection. No, there must be some mistake. The bottle must not have any poison left in it. Either that or the poison must have lost its potency. There, there, it's all right, Rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you place this much faith in Mr. Wright. <laughs> the defendant's only dying because of the glass shards are ripping apart his stomach? Maybe. Phoenix dot dot dots. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Ooh, that's gonna come back to haunt him. Which is why I can state that your assessment of her is completely wrong. Bang. That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Faye. 
I cannot accept your explanation of the events. But, but why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand, but in a court of law, evidence is everything. Ugh. Even after I prove so much, is she going to get away with everything? Bang. Well, now that the suspicions surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up, I would like to proceed with the trial. Hold it. Meh. Mr. Wright. I'm sorry, Miss Faye. It totally slipped my mind. I'm really, really sorry. I know you believed in me, and I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Um, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day. The day I met Doki Swallow. Girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. We're repeating this cutscene again for some reason. Mm hmm. I'm gonna read when it gets to something relevant. I don't know why we're seeing this a third time. Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. A poison? The same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. It could have only been her. That girl is a thief. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Is it true? Did he really say that? That's ridiculous. There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but... I'm sorry, Dolly. Objection! Your Honor, this is... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She's innocent. So Dolly has still poisoned eight months ago too, huh? You put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony. And there's only one possible conclusion. The defense believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doki Swallow. The night before. Naturally. Her motive for stealing it was to kill someone. Miss Faye. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. Mia, this is your chance. Oh, this is your last chance. Think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back. Therefore, exactly who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning to kill? Well, I mean, it's going to be Phoenix. There's, there's literally no one else to present. It doesn't really make sense for it to be anybody else. Take that. There was only one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was... Mr. Phoenix Wright. M -m 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 me Objection! That's preposterous. After all, it was Doogie Swallow that was murdered. Well, it's true that's how things worked out. But, let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was playing to poison was, in fact, you, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else that it could be. But how can that be? I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were in love. Did, did you not listen to, like, the past five minutes? <laughs> Poor Mr. Wright. This must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice, I swear it. As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to that incident eight months ago. That's right. The bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why? Why would she go so far as to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall of that attorney in the basement cafeteria. Dahlia Hawthorne, 
could only think of one thing. How to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No, it... it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made, too. The evidence was missing for a long time. But there was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. He even showed it to everyone he met. You mean, that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. That... 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 that can't be true! Feeny, what a joke you are. Uh-oh. Flicking the hair, she already looks annoyed. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? It's true, Dahlia. He is useless. I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. <laughs> Excuse me. You disgust me. Miss Hawthorne? It appears that we're nearing the end of the trial. Fine. I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? Seems your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle as a snack. Ugh. Well, um... Hey, old man, are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with that dumb look on your face? Miss Hawthorne, what's happened to you? Hmm, are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? Ugh. With absolutely no proof, you, tr you treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. But, but... We're not finished. Fine. Ooh. Yeah, it can't... Oh, that, that... I feel like she's gonna turn to face the camera with the evil glare real soon. She's setting up for it, chat. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. Why are we allowing... Yeah, I was gonna say, hold it. Why are we letting her leave the stand? I can't let her get away with... Away this time. Stop, Mia. If you keep on pushing without any evidence. You can pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price? You'd be forced to take off your attorney badge forever, I'm afraid. No! You'd better think it over carefully, Miss Fay. Or should I say, Miss Gray? Bang. Well, Miss Fay, can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? If I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But it, to be honest, at this point I don't have any evidence that's well founded. But, but, but what about, okay, whatever. Even so. I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible, you couldn't possibly. Stupid woman. Bang. It is of the opinion of the court that there has already been enough discussion. Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be presented. Just one? If you are unable to establish your guilt, then I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. Up-and-coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She was planning to poison Mr. Wright. They're loving the One Piece this case, indeed they are. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there, Brad text for there. 
Well then, Miss Fay, please present your evidence. Show to this court irrefutable proof that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison Mr. Wright. I mean, I'm just gonna present the pills, right? Take that. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X. Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. <laughs> Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. What? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony. But I lost my bottle of it around the lunchtime of the day of the accident. What was he with Dolly? Just the two of us. She was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it, knowing that Mr. Wright was going to take some. Objection! Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim, Doggy Swallow, that was holding the medicine. I mean, she just put it in his hand. Not really rocket science here. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? What are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her bottle necklace. But she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poisoned bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. Hmm. I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes, she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime including what the defendant and the victim were arguing about, and the cut electrical cable. That's when she realized, I can't allow Dogi Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check on the victim. On top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying the bottle of poison cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they search me like they did eight months ago? E eight months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence exactly the same way as she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Dogie Swallow. All right, let's see the freak out. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? This stupid woman. She's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Huh? Y yeah, th that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Objection. Hmm. I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne. This cold medicine. I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Uh-oh, chat. Checkmate. Well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? Uh-oh. If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. Ooh, the hard checkmate chat. So come on, show us. I dare you to take some of this medicine right now. Uh, Mia Fey. Mia Fey. There we go. Oh, she burst the butterflies. Do you think you've won? Well, do you, Mia Fey? I was expecting a little more veins, but I like this. <laughs> That's just fine. For the time being. Victory is yours. For the time being. Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. 
Well then, Mr. Judge, I'll see you later too, okay? Huh? Uh, why, um, yes. I'm going to spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. Ominous? Phew. It's finally all over. Objection! I... I refuse to accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim. But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm Winston Payne. I don't believe one word this rookie lawyer has said. Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Yes? Would you care to try this cold medicine? Ooh. There we go, chat. What? Just a little earlier. I could have sworn you said. There, there. It's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Mia trying to make some ghosts for her to communicate with in the future, chat. That's all this is. She's like, if I kill them now while well, they have knowledge and they're useful, I could use them forever with spirit channeling. So if she's so trustworthy, then I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, um, you see, um, yes. Objection. And here comes the backpedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? I feel like we, we went into like one of those like survival horror games. Where they're, where they're all like putting each other on trial. I feel like it's, it's come down to that now. It's just one of those kinds of games now. Are you willing to bet your life? See, that's exactly what they would say in those kinds of games. <laughs> Fade to white. <laughs> My hair, it's flying off. My beautiful hair! Whoa! No, 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 no! She deleted his hair chat. <laughs> They're not gonna comment on that? His hair literally flew off. Just... Just moving on, like that that's just an everyday occurrence in the courtroom. I don't think people normally spontaneously go bold, I'm just saying. It's quite something. Rip the pompadour. Oh, Mr. Payne, about Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Yes, Your Honor. I like how much he aged, too. I'll file papers for her immediate arrest. Hmm. Tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Oh, shut up, Judge. Don't lie. Just admit you're wrong. By the way, Miss Fay. Headline news, rookie attorney deleted prosecutor's hair with cold medicine, pretty much. Yes, your honor. Was it just me? Or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your honor, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Hmm. Very well. Oh, Mr. Payne. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing to my daughter. It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? Defendant, how did you feel mind-crushing another prosecutor? It can't be true. My dear Dolly! <laughs> mm -hmm. Very well then. I believe I'm ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does show conflict of interest. The court finds the defendant Phoenix Wright not guilty. I'm glad they had the confetti five years ago too, chat. I'm glad. Bang. Some things never change. This court is adjourned. April 11, 3.16 p.m. Just a court, defendant lobby number three. Mia, you were wonderful in there. Thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. He did somehow manage to do something right, I guess. During the verdict, I thought my hamburgers were going to explode, like Mount Vesuvius. This is really unnecessary, Grossberg. Um, Mr. Grossberg, do you, um, maybe think you should stop talking about them, please? Hmm, that's rather rude, and you're rather gross, Grossberg. 
Anyway, this case really made me think. What does it really mean to have a relationship of mutual trust with the client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright, congratulations. Thanks. Um, you know, I was thinking... Ooh, that's dangerous, Phoenix. Don't hurt yourself. Go on. The dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand. I don't think that was really her. Um, what? Yeah, the dolly I know can never accept those kinds of terrible things. Maybe she was... I don't know. A fake or something? Boy, this poor kid still hasn't got a clue. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright. For your own sake. Yeah, you're right. It's probably for the best. Also, need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But, but... Of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. He must not have many friends. Ugh. What kind of company does this guy keep? Right now, I... I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department. Well, yeah. I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. If I hurry, I should still be able to save him in time. I see. Say, Miss Faye. A lawyer is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new at this myself. But, I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna study my butt off. I'm gonna become a lawyer for sure. I hope. Hope we see each other again someday. Maybe even in court. Oh, we're not going to present any evidence here? It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. But Mia has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very precious ones. And memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now, but even so, I can hear her in my mind. Well, no, Phoenix, that's that's just Maya channeling her, like, every day, it seems, of this case. Phoenix, no matter what, always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. We can never be rid of Mia, exactly. Five long years. Something has happened that made me think back to her words of wisdom. But that is a story for another day. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories, The End. I think this is actually a pretty good stopping point. The Stolen Turnabout. That is a very ridiculous look. So we have Pointy Nose McGee, a flying magician. Ugh. Girl. <laughs> There's also Maya there, I think. An unknown person. Brand new episode has been added. The Stolen Turnabout. Well, we'll do that next time, I think, chat. But let's save our progress. Okay. That is quite the eyewear, indeed. Let's shout a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, Pearls is back. That, that I don't look forward to. So, how did we feel about the first case so far? I thought it was okay. I mean, it's like... They're not really going to give you a lot of suspects. I don't really hold a high bar when it comes to a mystery standpoint. Most of the pressing seemed fine. I mean, like, again, I haven't seen it before. But I think I generally knew what it want, having played the game before. Delete Grossberg and I give it an A. Yeah, Grossberg was just really not necessary. And, and, oof, some of those dated lines. Big oof. That, that, that hurt in the soul. So it was fine. It was better than a lot of the uh, second game tr trial cases, but still not like a super strong case. I think it. I think possibly if it goes somewhere with this setup, then you know I can rate it a little higher in hindsight. But yeah, those poor hamburgers indeed. But anyway, chat. Uh, so far, I mean, I guess I'll keep going. I don't see anything too egregious so far. So I guess that's all I really have to say in the playthrough so far. So. One one episode down, one one more to go next time. It's not the worst character we've seen. Sadly true. Sadly true. So with that, let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. 
So if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, just like to say thank you for watching. Hope to see you again in the next part. Oh my gosh, if she had that coughing thing, I would lose my mind.